Welcome to Lesson 8.8, .8, Arc, Length, and Circumference. So before we even get into any of the terms over here on the left, what I'd like for you to do is draw yourself a circle with the center point labeled A. And then what you want to do is draw a segment from A to any point on the circle, label that B, and then draw a segment all the way through the circle that passes through A, connecting two points on the circle. That way we can just simply do a refresher of some of our terms that we'll need to know that we build off of in this lesson. So if you ever see the symbol like this, a circle with a dot in it followed by a letter, that just means circle with the center point, whatever letter there is. So this would read as circle with center A, or sometimes we simply just call it circle A. Then a radius is any segment from the midpoint of your circle to a point on that circle. So in this case, we would have a radius AB. And then a diameter is a segment that connects two points on the circle while passing through the midpoint. So our diameter would be segment DC. And we need to know radius and diameter because both come into play when we're talking about circumference. So the circumference of a circle, many people think of that such as a perimeter of a circle, simply means the distance around the circle. So it'd be the distance from point B around the circle back to itself. Then we move into the term pi. So simple definition of pi. Pi is circumference divided by diameter. So C is circumference, D is diameter of the circle. So for any circle, circumference divided by diameter will always equal pi. So we can think of pi being the ratio of circumference to diameter of any circle. Then we have the circumference formula. So circle circumference formula. If a circle has circumference C, diameter D, and radius R, then we have two different formulas we can use. Circumference equals pi multiplied by the diameter. So in a problem, if you know the length of the diameter, you would use this left-hand equation. C equals pi times D. If we didn't know the diameter, but we know the radius, then we would use the right-hand formula. Circumference equals 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius. So circumference is either pi D or 2 pi R, because 2 times the radius is the same thing as diameter. And then we get the idea of exact answers or approximate answers. So if we're looking for an exact answer and pi is part of the function, we leave pi in the answer. So for example, if I had a circle with the diameter of 4, my answer for circumference would just be written as 4 pi centimeters. Or if I had a circle with a radius of 6, 6 times 2 is 12, so my circumference would be 12 pi inches. So simply put, exact answers, you leave pi as part of your answer. The approximate answer says to multiply by the approximation given by your calculator and round to the designated place. That simply means you use the pi button and your answer will come out to be a decimal. Now sometimes you'll be told to use 22 over 7 as an approximation for pi, or sometimes the more common one is using 3.14. But what I'd like you to do is to use the pi button in your calculator and then round the answer you get from that. By using the pi button, we're more accurate than if we use 22 over 7 or 3.14.
So then we get into our first example. Find the exact and approximate to the nearest tenth circumference of the circle at the right. So I have a diameter of 9. So circumference equals pi times diameter. So my exact answer would just be circumference equals 9 pi meters. My approximate answer, instead of leaving pi in the answer, I'd use the pi button on the calculator, multiplied by 9, and then rounding that to the nearest tenth, our circumference is approximately 28.3 meters. So then we get into example 2, where we're adding a real-life application of circumference. So in this case, they tell us Mia and Rosa, or Maya and Rosa, are on a bike ride. Maya's bike has a 29-inch diameter, or 29-inch diameter wheels. Rosa's bike has wheels with a 26-inch diameter. Maya bikes at a rate of 270 revolutions per minute. Rosa biking at a rate of 300 revolutions per minute. So part A first just wants us to find the circumference of the wheels of each bike and round to the nearest tenth of an inch. So for Maya, it'd be pi times 29. So use your calculator, and that's approximately 91.1 inches for that wheel's circumference. Rosa's would be a 26-inch diameter times pi. So Rosa's wheels are approximately 81.7 inches for the circumference. Now for part B, it's asking who rode further in one hour, Rosa or Maya? By how much? Round the answer to the nearest foot. So we got a couple different things to deal with here. First, what I think about is if I take circumference and multiply it by the revolutions per minute, that will tell me how far they traveled in one minute. So I'm just going to start there. So Maya had a circumference of 91.1 and 270 revolutions per minute. So multiply those, and we know Maya would travel 24,597 inches per minute. Then we do the same with Rosa. Circumference multiplied by the revolutions, so 81.7 multiplied by 300, tells us Rosa would travel 24,510 inches per minute. So in a minute, we know the difference in inches and who rode further. But that's not what it's asking. It's asking in one hour. So 60 minutes in an hour. So we need to take these answers that we just got and multiply them by 60 to find out how many inches they would travel in one hour. So for Maya, it's 1,475,820 inches per hour. And for Rosa, 1,470,600 inches per hour. But now the problem is they want our answer in nearest foot. So what I'm going to do is divide each of those inches per hour by 12 to convert it into feet per hour. So for Maya, the 1,475,820 divided by 12 tells us Maya travels approximately 122,985 feet per hour. Oop, did not mean to skip off there. Go back into the lesson. And then for Rosa, we take the 1,470,600 divided by 12, and Rosa would travel 122,550 feet per hour. So then to answer who traveled further and by how much, we would do Maya minus Rosa. So that would be Maya minus Rosa's distance in feet per hour leaving us with Maya traveling approximately 435 feet further than Rosa within that hour. Now I will tell you, if you look at the example in the book, they used the exact circumferences rather than the approximates. 
So when they did it, they used 29 pi and 26 pi rather than these rounded answers, and they came out with a difference of about 471 feet. That's fine because they didn't clarify to use exact or the approximate. So either way, it would technically be a correct answer. Then moving on from circumference, we get into the idea of arc length. So in a circle, the arc would be two points on the circle and the curve that connects them. So here, that would be arc AB. We would write it as this curve segment over AB, which reads as arc AB. So then what we want to know is the length of an arc. So in any circle, if we're trying to find the length of the arc, it would be the degree measure of the arc divided by 360 multiplied by our circumference. So basically it's saying what fraction of the circle is this arc multiplied by the circumference? Or if we didn't already know the circumference, but we knew the radius, we would do the same approach, degree measure of the arc over 360 multiplied by 2 times pi times the radius because circumference equals 2 pi r. So that's why we have these two different setups. So let's look at an example of computing arc length. So in example 3 it says circles with the center point D right over here. DF is 10 centimeters, so we have a radius DF of 10 centimeters, and angle FDE, the central angle, is 60 degrees. Find the exact length of arc FE. So if the measure of angle FDE is 60, the arc it creates, FE, is also 60 degrees. That means Fe would be 60 out of 360 of the whole circle, or we could think of that as 1 6, which you'll see down here when we simplify. So the measure of the arc Fe was 60 degrees, but we're not looking for the measurement in degrees, we're looking for the length. So what we're going to use is this equation right up here. Degree measure of the arc, 60 degrees over 360. Multiply by 2 times pi times our radius. So then what I think about is 360 over, or 60 over 360 is the same as 1 6. 1 6 times 2 is 1 third, and then 1 third times 10 would be 10 thirds times pi. So we would have 10 third pi centimeters for the length of that arc when we are giving the exact length. If we wanted the approximate length, we would do 10 thirds multiplied by the pi button and then round that decimal. So we're just using this equation set up right here, degree measure of the arc over 360 multiplied by 2 times pi times our radius. Then moving on to example four. So in example four, it says Michaela's cutting a freshly made pie. We're assuming it's a perfect circle. Radius of the pie is five inches. She begins cutting at the center of the pie. The first piece has an arc length approximately three inches. At about what angle should she cut the next piece if she wants it to be the same size as the first? So we're just going to assign the measure of the arc, or the measure of the arc's angle, I should say, to be the letter X. So whatever that measure is in degrees will be X. We know the radius is five, and we know the length of the arc is three inches. So we're still going to use this setup where the length of the arc equals degree measure over 360 times 2 times pi times r. But now we knew the length, so we would fill in the length 
three centimeters equals we don't know the angle measure so x over 360 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by our radius so then if we start to simplify 2 times 5 is just 10 so that last part is 10 pi so x over 360 times 10 pi equals 3 we need to solve for x so we're going to multiply each side by 360 to get rid of that fraction. So then we have 1080 equals 10 times pi times x. So we would divide both sides by 10 pi, and x comes out to approximately be 34, meaning she should cut from the center at approximately a 34 degree angle to get the next piece to be the same size as the first. So what you want to keep in mind, other than this length of arc setup, would be if we have a central angle, like we do here, angle FDE, the measure of that angle, 60 degrees, equals the measure of the arc it creates. That is why then when we work backward, We'd want all these center angles to be 34 degrees for our pieces to come out approximately the same.